by Falcon Paladin and Somicron. Falcon hates puns and thinks that they're all wrong. One's American and one is an Aussie. Talking about StarCraft 2 and the esports scene. Hello, and welcome to the podcast, Falcon. Thank you so much. It is glad to be here for another wonderful podcast day. It is glad to be here, not I am glad to be here. Wait, what? You said it is glad to be here. Yes, <laughs> it is glad to be here today. It, not I. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to make you guess what I'm talking about when I say <laughs> it, because uh, I think it'll drive you nuts. So, um, it is glad to be here today, and also I am glad here to be here today. So. Oh, well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Is Cinnamon sitting in the corner and that's who you mean? I, like I said, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, <busted>. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, we are back from a, a week off. Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, so I haven't seen you in a little while. Well, we played Halo and I mean, oh boy, we played Halo. <laughs> We sure played Halo. We finished the gosh darn campaign. We did co-op campaign. For and Halo finished, Infinite? Yep. Yeah, for Halo Infinite. And I was like, huh. Yep. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't feel anything at the end of this experience, which is not yeah. great. It's, it's an ideal to not feel something at the end of things. Um, that, that game's got some problems. <laughs> yes. In this, in this storytelling department. <laughs> yeah, oh. It's just lost. It's a lost soul. And I'm glad that 343, after what? Four games of failing at this? They're like, huh, we're not good at this, are we? Uh, three. I've done three, three games. games of failing at this. They yeah. decided they weren't good at it, and they're going to mm. get some help, which is good. I think that's a good choice. <laughs> really depends on who they go to, though. Like, ah, uh, we, we're, not, we're not really sure we can do this. Let's get some help. Let's, let's give the IP to EA. You know, I might take yeah. some issues. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's a good point. That would yeah. be terrible, but I don't mm-hmm. think that's what they're going to do, so I'm not really worried about it. I mean, we've already established that they can't make decisions very well. They're not good no. at decision making, so it no. would not surprise me. Really? If they were like, we needed some help in the storytelling department, we brought, we're bringing an EA and their ah. wonderful legacy of telling incredible stories. I think they would say it is a AAA game that deserves a AAA developer. Ugh, so they wouldn't give it to someone who does good stories they would do it to someone who does successful games hmm. by successful I mean lucrative obviously is infinite not lucrative mm. the problems with infinite wasn't that it didn't sell it's that the story sucks <laughs> well I don't know two million copies were sold of Halo Infinite I think they're okay I <laughs> really do two million copies is, is that like Including the multiplayer? Because that was free. Like They didn't make any money off people who just picked up the multiplayer. Yeah, good point. And that's then cool. didn't spend any so money on microtransactions. Up, wow, yeah, that screws up all of, the, uh-huh. all of the statistics here, doesn't it? Right, but that's the point. They want a company that knows how to work with a game that's loaded with microtransactions. That they can leverage to sell those microtransactions. Who do you go to? EA. Or Ubisoft, pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, Microsoft or whoever owns Activision. That thing's still held up in like lawsuits and stuff, right? Um, well, Microsoft hasn't officially acquired Activision Blizzard yet? No. I think the UK's like regulatory body is going to be like, Mm-mm-mm. and yeah. Microsoft's just kind of like waiting. <laughs> See what's happening. How is the UK involved? Microsoft and Activision are both based in the US. I don't understand the legalities of why uh, regulatory bodies need in foreign countries need to get involved. I assume yeah. it's just because they have locations there. Don't know. Mm, whatever. Don't know. Anyway, it hasn't well, happened yet. They so... do giant business there. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. The whole world's all interconnected in ways that it never has been before, and it's causing weird situations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anywho, whatever. Halo, over, done. <laughs> Donezo, never playing it again. 
No? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope, nope. I was I thinking mean... about it, and I was like, do you think Weapon's going to name herself Cortana Halo? <laughs> no, no, no. It's Photana. <laughs> Photana is my guess. Photana. Man, if she yeah. named herself Photana, there's like a million mental illness issues going on there <laughs> a lot of thing of therapy that she needs if she does that <laughs> she did spend six months isolated so she probably has a couple of screws loose yeah uh, for sure yeah uh, <laughs> okay. anyway whatever yeah what do we want to talk about well katavice is like tomorrow Ooh, it is you're right mm, well it starts tomorrow uh uh huh. I believe. Fun stuff. Yeah. No, not the group stages. The. Oh, the round of thirty-two. Yeah. 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 The last chance qualifiers. Right. Oh, thirty-six. Sorry. Hmm. Yep. So they got an upper bracket and a lower bracket, and a million people in here, like Teeble and yep. Cham and Coffee and who Sue. Is Coffee. <laughs> You don't know who Coffee is in here. What's up, Sue? I don't think so I know who Coffee is. So it's Classic and Scarlet and Cure. Yep, and yep. Jow. Some, decent, some decent names in here. How many make it through? Four? Four. Yeah. Four. Four. So 36 people. Through. Um, Sue, Cure. Uh, classic. Maybe Scarlet or Zhao. Zhao? Yeah. I think, I think Zhao, honestly. Mm-hmm. We're young, maybe. Like, I wouldn't be completely surprised. Maybe even a laser on a good day. Could do. So, Zound's currently 17th in Oligulac. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Coffee. Classic is 25th. Coffee is not in the first 40, so that does not bode well for him. Seems unlikely. Scarlet's 26. Mm -hmm. Cure is 11. So, Cure's the highest ranked one in Oligulac, mm. anyway, of the big names. So he seems likely, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did I do a laser? Laser's 19. Oh, okay. How? I don't understand how this works. How's Cure ranked 11th? And he's not involved <laughs> in the group stages already. What happened? Did he win anything this year? How is he ranked 11th? He hasn't won anything this year. I don't know. Residual wins? Oligia likes like, he was good last year. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, make him 11. <laughs> like, he won enough last year that the people who won this year, there is only like enough to push him out of top 10, not down to like 15th. Hmm. Perhaps. Perhaps you're right. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Well, should be interesting. When are these played? In so, nine hours. Nine hours. You gonna stay up? You gonna take a nap? You gonna watch these? It's a, a 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Gotta wake up at 6 to take the kids to school When I get back I'll probably flip it on See how it's going Fair enough Yeah yep. It should be good Yeah Maybe coffee will stun us all Maybe <laughs> <laughs> You never know <laughs> It's unlikely, unlikely. But you never know <laughs> Not uh, likely Maybe nice is in there. What, a, nice what a run that would be If coffee wins Katowice He comes from mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever heard of this person. They've won a total of $35,000, which isn't nothing. Nope. And, you know, from 2019. Well, it's like, like consistently it's competing with Time and Cyan and Max Ed in China is what mm -hmm. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Always, yep. Chinese player, so that checks mm -hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Like, Time's a good player. If he's ever beat Time in a Premier Tournament, that's pretty impressive, I guess. Mm. Yeah. He's a Terran, so it'd be a TBT win. Mm. Mm. Well, fair enough. Yes. Go, Coffee. <laughs> he's the unofficial pick of the Falcon Paladin Hour <laughs> For the round of 32 exclusively. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, I actually uh, brewed some coffee yesterday, so... Not last year, the year before. My sister got me a, like, a drip coffee, like, slow brew, but, like, cold brew coffee. Like, it drips it through the beans very slowly. It takes, like, yeah, yeah. a couple hours to run. Yeah, and I couldn't, I, 
I couldn't figure out how to make it work because all the water would just like pour through it really fast. I'm like, oh, well, this is done in like five minutes. Clearly, this is probably <laughs> broken. And so I put it away in my cupboard being like, well, I can't throw it out immediately. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll throw it out eventually. Uh, and I went to have a look at it yesterday. I'm like, okay, let's clean this. And I was like, why didn't I look up a video tutorial on how to use this? And sure enough, I found one. And the way it comes assembled was wrong. So there's a little plug oh. stopper that uh, is supposed to like l only let like a couple drops of water through every few seconds. They had put that in a container, and I at the bottom of the container is where it goes, but they put it in the container when it's supposed to go in through the bottom of the container, up, not in through... Inside the container, it's supposed to go in through the underside. Yeah. So I had put it in upside down and all the water was just flowing out. And now it works way better. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it sit in your cupboard? Uh, a year. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. Let, let it be said that Sabacron is not willing to look up instructions on things. Hey, I did now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It makes You've a good cup of converted. coffee. Yeah, I imagine it does. You tell your sister, you're like, so no, that was an idiot. No, and then no. I, I barely figured out this thing isn't broken. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, uh, she probably listens to the podcast religiously, so she'll hear about this eventually. She, she probably will. She probably will. Yeah, I'm probably listening right now. It's possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can check. I can tell you that she isn't, but. Oh. Well, she could be. She could be. And she has, she has access to the internet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she does. Yes. Uh, sent me a message on Discord at 11 p.m. last night while I was asleep. <laughs> Wait, yep. what? That's how I know she has access to the internet, because she's sending oh. me messages at 11 p.m. She's got kids. Yeah. She's going to do something when they're asleep. Yeah, that's true. You're, you can't tell me that you have kids and you've never been up to 11 p.m. It's like no, 10 o'clock right. now. Especially, no, it's 7 o'clock. Oh, it's 7 Especially when they're littler and you get them to bed at like 7 p.m. And then you're like, oh, it's me time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> up till 11. Mm. Messaging siblings over Discord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. Ugh. All right. Um, who, do you want to talk about Last of Us? I kind of want to talk about Last of Us a little bit. I, I I figured you would, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, what would you like to say about The Last of Us? Uh, I don't want to say... So we talk a lot about adapting things that are popular to other mediums and how it's difficult sometimes, but mm -hmm. it really seems like if you can do it in a way that you change things that you need to change for the adaptation and for the story you're telling, but make it good that people don't get mad at you for the things you change. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just think they're nailing it. I do. Um, episode three kind of fleshes out a relationship that exists in the game, but not very much. Okay. Uh, so basically you meet these two dudes who are hanging out in a town somewhere in the game mm -hmm. and they have a pre-existing relationship with Joel and one of them's out missing and the other one's all grumpy about it. And basically one of them had gone out to try to find a generator or a battery or something and got infected. Mm -hmm. got bit by a zombie and kills himself so it's this super grim dark like oh <laughs> <laughs> these two people had a relationship and one of them just died as a result of the fight that they had and it's not resolved and it's just like mm. okay bye thanks for the supplies we're going west <laughs> now <laughs> uh-huh yeah so in this one what they do is they give it kind of a better resolution Basically, Frank and their names are Frank and Bill. Frank develops MS or MLS or some de neurodegenerative disease, right? Mm -hmm. And he's probably 60, 65, 70 or something and decides that he just wants to die. So um, they basically just both like decide it's it's over. They've had a good time. They've had a good 20 year run. Yeah, and sure. They get to go out on their own terms. Mm hmm. And so by the time Joel and Ellie show up, they're already dead. So, you know, they don't even meet them. And at first I was like, well, I don't know. Like there's some fun interactions kind of there in the game talking to Bill and he's a grumpy guy and mm -hmm. Ellie's kind of snarky with him. 
They got sure. rid of all of that, but at the same time, it's like, well, I don't know. It was nice to flush out the characters and changing how their story ends doesn't change anything because we never see them again in the game. Mm. Like, and they never, Joel and Ellie never come back to this place. So right. it, you know, it tracked for me. It was good. It was really beautifully written, really well done. Um, there's been a lot of positive buzz about it <laughs> on the interwebs. So I anyway, saw, I saw some negative buzz about it, but I think it was just someone who yeah. likes to, likes to, uh, took issues with the fact that there was a gay couple because he was very thinly veiling it with like it's a zombie show there were no zombies in episode three uh all we got was broke back mountain you know and there were no, no zombies zombies in episode three that's not uh, even true <laughs> right well that's anyway, what people yeah that, that's what it said <laughs> that that's what this person had said and then someone was yeah. pointing out that within context episode four or five i don't remember which one it was literally had no zombies and they did not complain so accurate it, it definitely wasn't they just wanted to complain about the fact that there was a gay couple on the show um even Very briefly like um mm -hmm. but that is by technical definition a complaint about the show <laughs> yes no very true and no absolutely like people on the internet who are not comfortable with seeing gay dudes on tv uh, you know have some negative things to say about it for sure but like i don't, mm -hmm. I don't know like yep. whatever it's 2023 like get with the program i don't know <laughs> oh I feel about only it. that simple <laughs> yeah if only it was that simple agreed yeah yeah so yeah there was that and then yeah no zombies in sunday's episode but mm -hmm. uh some pretty man I'm just, so just one thing we're not going to spend forever on this episode but in the game there you know you're fighting zombies but you're also fighting people five like raiders uh, yeah, fireflies, just yeah. people who are in opposition to what you're trying to do. Sometimes mm -hmm. they just want to kill you for your stuff, right? That's right. just how this works in post-apocalyptic world. Mm -hmm. uh, but they never humanize the mooks you kill. Right. Like you get attacked by a bunch of raiders and you murder them all. And it's like, all right, cool. We murdered those dudes. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. <laughs> they do that. In, this, what? in the game, it's like you murder them and it's like, great, let's yeah. move on. Yeah, let's check them for bullets because we need mm -hmm. those. And if they have any food, that'd be great too. Right. And then we'll move on. So that happens in episode four. They get attacked by this group of raiders and Joel kills like three of them. And then a fourth one comes along. And he, bottom line, he ends up injured and he's begging for his life. This raider mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he's given enough time to be like terrified that he's going to die... Mm -hmm. and like bargaining and say like telling him his name like my name's mark we could be friends we can trade together and joel's face is just like sorry man you are not making it out of this <laughs> right no but it it just gives it an entirely different emotional tone mm -hmm. yeah and then when you kill these dudes and they don't say a word and you don't know their names and they're not afraid and it's just you know man versus man and somebody wins you know right yeah that's all so i just i really appreciated that because it just is such a different emotional heft to the scene when you have to kill someone who is begging for their life right and scared out of their wits and it's i mean he's it's not like he's a kid kid but he's probably only like 19 or 20 that's a kid <laughs> yeah right <laughs> not technically but yeah yeah, yeah. And so Joel, like... <laughs> Not according to Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> if you've heard about that, I think it only cropped up today. So I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you're going with that. Take me a second. I got there. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah. And then just to add another level of kind of realism onto it, Joel doesn't shoot him. He stabs him because it saves a bullet well, and it's right. quieter. Right. And you're just like, okay, this show is doing some good stuff. <laughs> like they are doing some different things mm -hmm. uh, than what exists in the game. And I think it's fantastic. So I'm just happy with it. Things, think, ugh, think things are going good. So, and, yes. I mean, it still needs to nail the ending though, right? Yeah, oh yes i mm. is is it I, such a good interpretation of the journey much of which in the last of us is important uh but like does it because they like killing the mook even though like he's like pleading for his life and giving his name and like you know 
ultimately the show is humanizing him and it's making the very rough decision that Joel has to make, which is ending this guy is literally the right call here, right? Like, that is what we're told. He could be alone. He might not be. He's wounded now. He might still have friends. He might chase you. He might have a knife in his back pocket the moment we turn our backs. It's in our backs. Um, So, and the end of The Last of Us, the game, spoilers, don't listen for the next two minutes, is... Joel makes a decision based on not what is probably the right call for humanity. I guess, is that the right way to put that? I think that's correct. So, yeah. Are we going to still see Joel be able to make those right decisions if we're spending so much time showing showing us that he makes hard decisions? You know, like, is it going yeah. to have a bigger payoff? Are they going to change it in some way? Is it going to be like, oh, well, we don't believe that this character would now make this decision. So we have to, like, shoehorn it to fit somehow where it's made by someone else and Joel's just reacting. Like, they need to nail the ending, they do. Uh, is, is what I'm saying. But do, do you think they're capable of it? So part of what that makes the ending so good is not even just that Joel makes the call to Mm. get Ellie out of there and kill some doctors in the process because Mm -hmm. he doesn't want her to die. He selfishly chooses to keep her alive rather than giving humanity a chance to beat this fungus, right? Mm -hmm. That's big. But what's bigger is he takes her. She's unconscious because they're prepping her for surgery. Mm -hmm. And and she wakes up in the Mm -hmm. truck as he's driving away. And he has to explain to her what happened. (laughs) And she can kind of (laughs) tell that he's lying. Something went down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she looks him dead in the eye and she's like, is that true? Like the, the doctors really said. I couldn't help. I couldn't help. And Joel dead face, dead pants looks at her and goes, yep. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and that's how the game ends. And you're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah. Oh, you muted yourself. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Oh. So, I just hope they don't change that. Because I think that ending and that conversation is part of what has made this indoor as long as it has. Mm. It's just that feeling you get when you're like, Joel, buddy, I get it, but man. Just tell yeah. the truth. <laughs> Come on, I'm, man. I'm worried they want to dick around with it, though. I really mm. am. I've been listening to the podcast with the show creators. Mm-hmm. And they kind of revel in changing stuff, and it's like, okay, oh, that's I know a little bit. Like they understand that part of what they're doing is making it uh, adaptable for a TV show versus a video game. Like mm-hmm. we talked about how Joel kills fifty people before you leave the <laughs> quarantine zone in the game, and you can't do that in a TV show, right? Mm. Um, so they get it. They get certain things you have to change, but sometimes they change things, and it's like. They're just doing it because you... actually they said I forgot they said this in the most re- recent episode of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Like we don't want the people who played the game just to know exactly everything that's going to happen. And I'm like, okay, but like <laughs> also maybe we do. <laughs> maybe we do want that, you guys. <laughs> oh, that's so. I'm worried. I'm so worried they're going to change the ending somehow. Mm just for the sake of changing it and like ruin this perfect emotionally devastating ending to their story. Mm, it's possible. I know. We'll see. Fingers crossed they don't do that. I know. I'm I mean it's I would like tweet at them if it wasn't already done. It's the thing. <laughs> It's not too like for like, reshoots. Don't screw up the ending, but I mean, it's done. It's in the bag. It's ready to mm. go. They've only I... got like four more episodes left, so it's definitely finished. <laughs> right? No, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's good. It's good. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh oh. So I did watch an episode of Batty Daddies. Oh, yeah? Where are you up to? Uh, the one where one of the assassins finds her mom, and her mom sucks. Mm, yep. And she's like, I don't want that kid bat. <laughs> that kid's too happy all the time. I've been cast yeah. with a happy child, and I don't like it. And when she laughs, I hate her. And I'm like, what is wrong with you, lady? 
<laughs> yeah. I'm like, her life sucks. She's got an abusive boyfriend slash manager. Slash pimp. Know. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. It's not really clear what their relationship is, but yeah. No. It's not great. Nope. Yeah, so it just it just becomes clearer and clearer that like this little ray of sunshine child does not belong where she was. Mm-hmm. Not a good place for her to be. It, it's it's wild to think that in the company of two assassins, two hitmen working for an underground like organization, like a yakuza or a mafia type sort of system, is a better place for this child to be. Yeah, because weirdly, at least they have money. <laughs> They have money and they love her. Like <laughs> that, when she laughs, too. they're like, "This is amazing." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're still two episodes behind. If I recall, you're yeah. always going to be one episode behind because you don't want to pay for Crunchyroll. Correct. Fair yeah, enough. yeah, yeah. I intended to watch another one, but then I I forgot. So <laughs> I'm two behind, but I will watch yeah. two for next week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is great, because I actually have another show I want you to watch as well. Okay. It's called The Fire Hunter. Crunchyroll, The it is, Fire Hunter. It is on Crunchyroll. Okay. The uh, Fire Hunter. Yes. So, it starts off with this girl traveling through, like, a forest by herself, and gets attacked by a bear, and a man jumps in to save her with his dog and like a sickle but he dies right like that's the start of it and the bear bleeds yellow which is weird um and it turns out that this man was a fire hunter and they kind of protect people from monsters in this world um and the little girl she's young and gets tasked with basically traveling to the capital to give the dog and the sickle and like this what I think is like an ID stone. Like it's what they have for his ID. It's like a rock with his name carved on it or something. Or words carved on it. I don't know what I mean. Uh, and give it back to his family. Like returning these possessions. Um, and then we get some like backstory that humanity can no longer wield fire. <laughs> and that if they do, you incinerate yourself if you get too close to raw fire. But we can harvest the blood from like these beasts as like an emulsion and use that to power technology. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Ooh. it's got a very serious tone so far. I'm a couple episodes in, uh, and I think it's going to be a good show so far from what I've seen. I think it's handling everything with like an appropriate heaviness that it does. Like they're sending this little girl off to the capital. They come on these, trucks like every six months to collect offerings from like little villages and these are armored trucks with like machine harpoon guns to fight off things in the wild and they're like look kid like these trucks look sturdy but like it's it could be like a two-year round trip and you might not even make it out of the fucking forest and the little girl's (laughs) like i you know i i I understand i guess i have to go though and she's got a rough relationship with the family because uh, her father had died in like a fire explosion and her mother's eyes were nearly burnt out and she was trying to get... That's what she was doing in the forest at the start. She was trying to find like these other clan of people who could give them medicine for her eyes, but she got attacked and everyone in the village is like, the girl was dumb enough to go into the villi- uh, forest and not help her. It's, you know, it's got some interesting world building going on. I highly recommend Okay, Crunchyroll yeah. has all of the first four episodes as premium because because <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> yeah. What? I was like, cool. I was like, nope. Episode one is premium, and two, and three, and four. And I was like, but why? This is not how this is supposed to work. Sucks to be you. Give it to me a week after, like with Batty Daddies. Nope, apparently not. Uh, stupid sign up for stupid premium, stupid Crunchyroll, stupid. Uh, you can wait. You can wait a couple of weeks, and now I'll, I'll tell you if it gets better, if it's worth it before you buy it. Um, okay, deal. Yeah. Also, I was annoyed at Crunchyroll today because I'm like, I'm just gonna switch to the yearly account because you know it's got a discount. I'm unlikely to unsubscribe entirely. Hmm. Uh oh, Tavish, thank you for subscribing. All this talk of subscribing, and someone just jumped in. Thank you. 
Um, and there's no way to just like swap the plan you're on in Crunchyroll to a yearly account. Oh. The, yeah, like, that's it's, stupid. it's just not like I opened up a private window and I just opened it up and it was like, hey, do you want to sign up here? Select your plan. You know, 10 bucks a month, 14 bucks a month, but you can like save and watch videos offline or the yearly plan where you save like 20 bucks at 20 percent on it or some shit. And there's no way to swap. So I had to cancel my membership and I'm going to wait for that to lapse and just not order new and then sign up again, basically. Crunchyroll is stupid. Yes, it is. That is incredibly <laughs> stupid that I have to do that. That Why is he's so bad at this. I feel like Funimation was better at this. Why did Funimation not survive? Why did Crunchyroll have to survive? Uh, I don't know. I think Got Crunchyroll has better branding. <laughs> the answer. Yeah, I guess. I don't yeah. know. When I was doing both, I felt like Funimation was more competently put together as a streaming service. I felt like they were about the same. Hmm. I Honestly, thought Crunchyroll was like weaker around the edges. Maybe it was just the ads, because Crunchyroll uh, for the longest time would like crash when it tried to load an ad, and I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've never How watched so either with ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't watch either with ads. Yeah. Never have, so I wouldn't have had that. But I can understand. Um, what I will say, Crunchyroll does fail at some stuff because uh, I want to talk about Sword Art Online for a second. Um, oh no. Okay. So they did like a soft reboot with what's called Sword Art Online Progressive, where in the original first season of the, and I believe like the manga or the light novel, I don't remember how it came out originally, they basically skipped over the entirety of the game, right, that they were initially stuck in. So you know how like they're stuck in a death right. game and if they die in the game, they die in the real world. Right, right. They basically like time skip through that and within like 12 episodes, the game's done. But in time span that's like a two-year process and like there's a couple episodes where they do stuff in the game and some of those episodes on their own are okay even but they did like a soft reboot where they they also like rewrote the them but it's going through it progressively like it's not doing any major time skips and they're releasing those as movies and the first movie i hadn't seen and i was like eh, kind of not interested but the second one just came out um yeah. and so that. <clears throat> so i was like okay well i'll watch the first movie but i couldn't find it in subtitled on crunchyroll like under it the sort it only had dub so i searched i just google search for crunchyroll sword art online progressive aria of a Star starless knight is what i think the first movie is called very long um and it gave me a link to that's to like the, the the content page on Crunchyroll that just wasn't listed under the rest of it, and I found it. Like I had to search on Google to find it within Crunchyroll because they had it, they just didn't <laughs> list it for me. Crunchyroll, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the movie was good. Like uh, it covers what is maybe like the first two episodes of like the original show. And it switches, uh, like, the focus from the male lead to the female lead for, like, the most of it. Uh, mm -hmm. It recontextualizes some stuff, so it adds a new character. It was actually fine. I'm, like, the movie was okay. Uh, not amazing, not going to blow anyone's mind. But it was, if they keep going with this level of quality, it'll be significantly better than the show. <laughs> not hard. Not hard. Ah. Not 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 impossible. No. Not not impossible. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody in the Discord server was real excited to go see the the movie that just came out. Mm -hmm. But they did not come back and report about it. So I don't know. <laughs> if it wasn't good. I saw some or... people on Reddit talking about it, and they seemed happy. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know how quickly it gets into what is new content because obviously when you don't time skip a bunch you have to fill in those blanks with something um and so it could be that this second movie immediately goes into new content where this one was basically rehashing old content yeah uh, so mm, could be then i'll I'm, I'm not gonna go to the movies to see it uh but I will wait yeah, for it to come out on stream. No, of course not. I wouldn't expect you to. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anybody was curious. Oh, God. I, you know. I don't know.
I would bet my life savings to say that you wouldn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so back to Batty Daddies just for a second. Okay, sure. So twice in this episode, mm-hmm. what's her face? I don't remember her Mary name. Mary Chan? Mary. The, the child. Mary yeah. Ends up in the custody of Protective Service, Child Protective <laughs> Services, and the police. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so if this is going to keep happening. So I know once when, like, Ray is just like, I'm going to take a nap at the park, and she wanders off, basically. He's just, he's spacing out being emo about his dad. He doesn't even take a nap. He's just thinking. That's it. Yeah. He's just like, what the crap, dude? You have a four-year-old you need to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is that. When was the second time? And then the second time is when Blonde Assassin has her at the park. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that Child Protective Services comes over. Isn't it just like an old dude who's like, is this your kid? Because she no, had kind of wanted off. a special representative of like the oh. government. I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I mean, I thought that was just like a neighborhood community guy. Like he's someone who's like, like a neighborhood watch type person. I don't remember him being in uniform. He had like an armband on, right? Yeah, but like lots of people have armbands on if you watch anime. Like... Mm. <laughs> Armbands are just like, I'm a representative of the student council. Here's my armband, <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 good point. So that's why I would say, oh, it's like an unofficial organization, like a neighborhood watch. Here's my armband. Yeah. That's okay, commu- fair enough. Yeah. I just, I got the impression, maybe through the subtitles or through what was going on, that it was uh, like an official child well, services in Japan kind of a guy, but I don't it, know. That, that, he, I, I mean... Depends on how you use the word official. Like, is he directly associated with the government? No, but is that essentially still his job unofficially within the community? Probably. Like, it was yeah. still just as much risk. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Because they're like, okay, I guess we have to keep her now. And I was like, okay, look, you can't adopt her because you guys are assassins. <laughs> you can't be like, we found this girl and we like to be her dads now. And the government's like, cool, let us do an extensive background check on both of you. <laughs> and that's going to go real well for both of you in the end. Mm-hmm, but you mm-hmm. can't also just like have her and take her to the park and stuff. Cause one of these days, the cops are going to be like, mm, let me see some ID there, fella. Right. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. every time anyone ever asks Miri what her name is, she gives a different last name than either of those have so. <laughs> right <laughs> oh man the funniest part of the episode is after she's been like had drilled into her don't call me papa in public, in public. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the old guy's like is this your dad and she's like mm. <laughs> he's like no you can't call me papa to that guy <laughs> like <laughs> it's great it's a fun show you're gonna love the next episode so i think good. They, they introduce okay. in the next episode my favorite group of side characters, I think. Uh, because they decide that they need to basically go back to work because they're running out of money, essentially. Yeah. Um, when did and they so, stop working? Uh, when they started, like, after this episode, they basically like, we're going to look after the kid for a while. Um, yeah, okay. And they decide that they, like, oh, we could, like... To daycare. We could put her in daycare. <laughs> like, send her to preschool, basically. Again, proof of identity <laughs> and guardianship. Don't worry. They co- ID background checks. They cover all of this, I assure you. Okay, good. <laughs> but when they get there, all of the other kids are being dropped off by their moms who have a texting group and are just constantly like, ooh, wow, they're hot. They look like they've got money. I would like a slice of that. Very blatant. <laughs> <laughs> about yeah. it's very funny i love those scenes with those mothers i want more of it in the show because <laughs> it is so funny deal looking forward to it you should absolutely look forward to it all right awesome yeah uh, so that's that's been pretty fun mm-hmm. 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 what else hmm Oh, you know what? I just remembered. Yeah. Fire Force. <laughs> Fire Force. Is that a, Remember that's how a... we talked? The last time we talked about it, I was very clear that I watch the show, I enjoy it, and then I forget it exists. 
and then two or three weeks later, I'm like, oh, maybe there's a new episode of the <laughs> <laughs> Right. Is, is season so, three happening? Is that what you remember? Uh, I just remembered it exists, because I was right. like, what other animes do I watch? And I was like, Fire Force! Oh, yeah! <laughs> So I have no idea how no. far back I am on that one at this point. Season three is not started. Okay. I don't so think they're been through season two. I, I know I have not. Uh, last yeah. episode came out December 2020, so I would not Ooh. be surprised if you hadn't if you were caught up or if you maybe I am totally caught up. Okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> Never mind, I'm good. It took a huge break. <laughs> they yeah. they finished season two in December of 2020. Yep. Wow. Yes. Okay. And when is season three supposed to be a thing? I haven't heard anything about it. Maybe it's dead. Well, it, it could just be whoever's making it's taking some time off to work on all the projects. And as always, if you search for the next season of a TV show, all these garbage websites pop up. Being like, like, we know everything. Information, click on this link. And then like, we don't know. It's like, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Assholes. Uh, here's Thanks what we know so far on the upcoming release. On May 16th, 2022, the anime's official Twitter account announced that Fire Force is confirmed for another season. Okay. So, and this website says there's rumors it'll be premiered in summer of 2023. It is summer of 2023. And, well, in the <laughs> best hemisphere. Oh! A trailer for it! <laughs> That's them, them some fighting words. <laughs> More people live in the northern hemisphere, <laughs> and your air quality is lower because of it. <laughs> uh, on average, yeah, sure, makes sense. That, that doesn't make it the best, just because you've got more people. That actually makes it the worst. I'm just saying, if you're trying to account for the world, that doesn't make it the best. No, 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 I'm just saying, if you need to account for the world, and you're going to use a word like summer, then summer <laughs> is going to apply to the people where mm. there's more people in the hemisphere. I don't think that's right. Okay, fine. I think that's I think that's racism. Yeah, no, it probably is. <laughs> but that's how the world works, Somicron. Sad, mm -hmm. sad place. He looks. This person calls it a hot summer anime because it airs in the summertime. Oh, because it's Fire Force. <laughs> it's hot. Because wow, the first two seasons did air in uh, June, July, and August. Okay, so. cool. Yeah, fair enough. It's kind of thematically appropriate too, I guess. Because you're right. There's a lot of fire in this show, as evidenced by the name. Not that sure. the name of anime is really has a ton to do with what the show is sometimes, but... Uh, yeah. which ones don't? Um, that's a great question. Now I'm only thinking of the isekais, where they're very specific <laughs> about what's going on in the show. <laughs> to an annoying extent. <laughs> Saving for 80,000 gold in another world. <laughs> Trapped in another world with my smartphone. Yeah. That time I got resurrected as a slime. Yeah. Right. That's a good one, actually. You should watch that. Yeah, yeah. Um, give, give it a go. Giga like that one in his anime review. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He made me want to watch Made in Abyss, and I'm like, I don't want to watch Made in Abyss. You, Made in Abyss is so good, though. It's not I any... know it's so good. <laughs> so I don't want to watch it, though. I don't want to be emotionally devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. I'm not in the right place for it. And he says that in his review. He's like, look, you can't really recommend it to someone. You just tell them it's good, and then when they're ready for it, they'll watch it. <laughs> I mean, isn't like The Last of Us an emotional roller coaster of things as well? You're watching that. That's true. I certainly am. I think you just... But yeah. it's... Yeah, I don't know. You just don't give uh, anime any credit. I saw your top 10 movies to watch, not a single anime movie on there. It's just like, ah! That's true. That says something about me, doesn't it? It does. Not as far along the weeb scale as you are. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that mine's loaded with it. It's definitely got two in there, but, you know. I don't know what yeah. the other eight even are. Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, I guess. That's six of them. on Amazon? Is it? Yep. Well, I've got Amazon, so that works, I guess. Sure, it's also on Crunchyroll. No, it's not. No? Not here, anyway. Maybe it's on Australian Crunchyroll. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Maybe it's that to my watch list. Oh, it's on my watch list. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was here, and I added it to my watch list at some point. 
<laughs> that tracks. But I, I never was like, boy, I'm going to watch this now. Oh, Main Abyss is on uh, Funimation, which is owned by Crunchyroll, and they're supposed to be moving all their content over, but they haven't done it yet. They still ha- It's 2023, and they still haven't done it yet. Yes. Crazy bums. Mm-hmm. Get it together, boys and girls mm-hmm. and non-binaries. <laughs> Looks like they only have episode, uh, season one as well. That's annoying because I know there's movies. Yeah. Maiden Abyss does something weird. Well, it's not weird with the context of anime. Lots of shows do it like this, which is they have a season, then they have three movies, and then they have a second season. And two of those movies are recaps of the se- first season. So you don't need to watch them, but you do need to watch one of them, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I just don't remember which one. Um, yeah, figure that out and let me know. <laughs> I'm sure you can work it out. <laughs> uh, cool, 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 cool. Super cool. So yeah, Katowice is going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm, I've got some Batty Daddies to watch. Maybe Made in Abyss at some point. Last mm-hmm. of Us is awesome. Fire Hunter. Uh, Fire Hunter is on my on my list on Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, it's true. And uh, oh, so Ant Man and the Quantumania movie mm-hmm. is coming out this week. Yeah, I heard about that. So I'm really not interested in this movie, except for the fact that Jonathan Majors is in it as King the Conqueror. And he was like the best thing in Loki, kind of. Okay, sure. So I think I'm probably going to watch it just for that, just to see if he kicks ass. Mm. I, <laughs> I just saw a headline, Marvel debuts new villain, King the Conqueror, and Man of the Wasp. Even though he was... True, <laughs> he was debuted in Loki, you jerks. <laughs> Yeah, just a reminder wow. that most journalistic organizations have at least like 70% inaccurate information. Uh, yeah, and they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, True fact. But maybe they mean movie debut. Loki's yeah. not a movie. That would be accurate. Mm-hmm. They don't say that, but maybe that's what they mean. What does Rotten Tomatoes say? Are there any reviews in yet? Nope. No reviews yet. Okay. Mm. So that's like the 15th here. Uh, so long away. When did it come here? Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's not until I guess it's not for another week. Yeah, it's yeah. Fair enough. <sighs> cool. 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 So yeah, I don't know. I'll pr- ah. Ah, blah, blah, blah. I think I'll see how the buzz is about it. Mm-hmm. If people are like. Eh, everything's kind of lame except for King. He's awesome. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to bother. <laughs> I mean, but if uh, it's a good movie and King enhances it, then I'll be like, all right. Mm. I saw someone talking about it on Twitter, but it was like, like I loaded up Twitter and it defaults to the For You page. And all of that, like, I, like you can't find that again because it like refreshes and then it's gone. And I'm like, ah, thanks. Because I really needed to see that. You know, somebody followed someone else and they dropped a tweet. And occasionally it's pertinent, but most of the time it's not. But now it's gone. So, yeah, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, that is strange. I don't, I don't like that feature. But no. uh, hmm. they, they, it was saying it was not looking good. Is the general uh, just as and quantum mania? Some of the early reactions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I'm wary. Mm. That's fair. Yep. Fair enough. All right. Ooh, I don't think there's anything else. You planning yeah, on playing I'm... Hogwarts Legacy? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh. What a plot twist! All right. Yeah, I. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't really care about all the J.K. Rowling turf problems that are going on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, From what I've seen, it's like a 20-hour campaign, and it's fine. And I don't (laughs) have enough of an emotional connection to 
to Hogwarts and Harry Potter to be like, oh, I get to explore the castle. Like, I don't care about <laughs> that stuff. I don't know. The books are good. Mm-hmm, but I'm not mm-hmm. that much of a Potterhead, so. No, no. I, I couldn't give a fuck about Harry Potter in general. I think it's mid at best. Ooh. Yeah. Fighting words. Yep. Uh, them, them fighting words. Right. I mean, I mean the, what, the one thing that I am kind of interested in is I want to see what happens if you decide to play a Dark Wizard because apparently you do get access to all of the like curse spells, like the, the three big right. ones. I looked at the spell list. There's like nine in the entire game and they're all the ones that stand out in the movie, right? Like, yeah. Expelliarmus! I, Alahomora! See, I'm enough of a Potterhead to know these spells off the top of my head. I think those two aren't in that <laughs> There's no Expelliarmus. <laughs> uh, oh, all right. That, that one. <laughs> that one might be in it, but it's all like uh, Lumen and uh, the one for the the one for the the shape shifting in the closet thing. Bogart, I think, is what it's called. Uh, like ridiculous. Yeah, that's in there. <laughs> okay, okay. So oh, here it is. We got Prote- Protego. Mm-hmm. Stupefy, Lumos, Rev. Velio, that's not even in the books. Axio, <laughs> which brings something to you. Levioso, should be a Leviosa, whatever. Reperio, <laughs> that's in the books. Ancient magic is not in the books. Ancient magic throw is not in the books. Incendios in the books. The fire spell. Disillusionment is in the books. Mm-hmm. Petrificus Totalis is in the books. That's a petrifying spell. Expelliarmus is in here. Oh, it is. Okay, I missed it. Which disarms your opponent, which is all Harry ever does in the books, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Because it's, I don't know, just I'm really good at this one thing, and it works pretty well. <laughs> well, I, when all of, everyone you ever fight can only cast magic through their wand, getting rid of their yeah. wand is really great. But I would love to see like some body horror Harry Potter where someone's like grafted into their arm, you know? It's like, oh, yeah. good luck dispelling this, you bitch. The <laughs> <laughs> Pulso, I don't think that's in the books. Confrigo is not in the books. That's another fire spell. We need two of those. Defendo is in the books, but more from earlier games. Like mm. earlier games, like year 2000 Harry Potter or PC games. Sure. Yeah. Wingardium Leviosa is in the books. Glacius is not in the books. Alahomora is in the books. Descendo is not in the books. Flipendo, another video game spell that's not in the books. The list you found was longer than the one I did. Yeah, I guess. About a Cadavra, Crucio, and Imperio are the three forbidden spells. Mm-hmm. Imperio mind controls people. Mm-hmm. Crucio mm-hmm. tortures them. About a Cadavra kills them. Yeah. Yeah. Which, why wouldn't you ever cast that spell if you're playing an RPG? Like, it seems right. like so easy. Yeah, this list is much expanded from what I found. I guess I found like someone who was like, I've played it for an hour. Here's my nine spells. Right. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's so still texture, um, yeah. It, I mean, f- for a <clears throat> such emphasis on it being a wizarding world, I would expect a lot more spells, to be honest. But I would too. You know, twenty-three, uh, thirty-one. It says, and you can allocate up to twenty-three of them into four spell slots. So you can only have four equipped at a time. Is what I'm here. <laughs> Cool. Wow. Not cool. Why would you only be able to cast four spells? They're spells. Like, you're <laughs> not carrying them around with you. You just know them. Well, wizards in D&D have to prepare spells each day, and they only know uh, a certain number of them. They know more spells, and they have them in their wizarding books, but they don't have them prepared. You can prepare four in this. Well, you know them. Yes. D&D rules, sure. Mm -hmm. that's not how it works in harry potter i'm just uh, yeah no (laughs) i mean but people do have to practice spells why like they could just be saying well you haven't practiced wingardium leviosa so you can't do it at the moment (laughs) how you just suck at the spell (laughs) right i mean but can't you just like open the menu swap out for alohomora unlock the chest or whatever then swap it back to whatever it is you had before. It seems really tedious to only have four when yeah. they just like go through the menus to have more for when you need it. Seems seems shit. Yeah, sounds bad. Yeah. So yeah, there's just nothing that's calling me to play the game. So mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah. 
There was a website somebody made that scans Twitch for people <laughs> who have right. said they're playing the game. Right. Yes. You which can go shame them for doing it, which is like, okay, fun. What a great <laughs> world we live in. <laughs> don't don't do that, people. That's stupid. <laughs> Harass people on Twitch for playing a game that you think is bad. Don't do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right, cool. We're cool. Done. We're done. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out for another edition of the Falcon Paladin Hour with Somicron streamed live at twitch.tv slash Somicron every week on Tuesday night if you are in North America and on Wednesday afternoon, early afternoon-ish if you're in Australia. Accurate. So somewhere in between there, depending on where you are on Earth. But you can also watch the VODs on YouTube. True. True facts. Just go to youtube.com slash at Somicron. Uh, I think that's right. You have that to throw like a U in I there. Just or tried no? it. Okay. You got to do the at Somicron. At Somicron. So it's not just slash Somicron. It's slash at Somicron because that's how URLs work, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the VODs go up there. So if you don't want to do Twitch, you're more of a YouTube person, then great. Yeah. The, the VODs the VOD don't stick around on Twitch for, for forever anyway. I don't bother <laughs> since that. You don't bother saving them? Nope. <laughs> got it. Okay, cool. Uh, you can support the podcast directly by buying merch at falconpaladin.store and also at our Patreon page, patreon.com slash somicron. Also accurate. Yep. So thank everybody who does it that way. And until next week, you know, about seven days from now, stay safe and stay healthy. And above all, you take care of yourself.